podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it, man. It's a unique house. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. Wait, how's it going? I am blessed. Hey, blessed, man. Blessed. Too blessed to be stressed. Exactly. Man, hey, man, we got a special guest in here today. He don't need no introduction. These guys are family, the ones been here today. Boy, I feel real comfortable talking to these guys. Other folks, I'll be like, let me read this and look at that. Not today, man. I know these guys, man. They need an introduction to our viewers check it man my boy Emmanuel's in the building man what's going yes. on man yo yo, yo what's going Emmanuel, on Emmanuel what's going on say that last name man Fasania 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 man listen it was E to me yeah, it's man. always been E to me, you man. Doctor E to PT now. <laughs> hey, man. So, man, you doctor, man. But you know one thing. I remember when he was young, when he was here, mm -hmm. he said this is what he was gonna set out to do. It's crazy. And did he I, know it was gonna no, be in it, this field? I don't a know if he knew what field it was going to be in, but I know he told me this that he was right here in this store. Yes. The power of the mind is not a joke, man. He told me this. It's not a joke. But you knew it was this field or no? Man, I know I wanted to do, at first I thought I wanted to be like a, uh, I wanted to go into orthopedics, like be mm -hmm. an orthopedic surgeon. I really didn't know about it. I knew it was a surgeon, it was a doctor. I knew I wanted to be in the medical field, but I kind of found physical therapy later on, uh, kind of through Josie. Uh, okay. Josie was doing it and then, uh, he kind of did it and shadowed in college and figured out he didn't want to do that. He went into IT and, you know, um, I said, you know, this is what I want to do. I stuck to it. So um, really right before college, actually, it was in uh, high school, like senior year. Yeah, really? into Senior year going into like freshman year of uh, college. So I just knew I didn't know what doc type of doctor you want to be, at, but I knew that's what you told me you wanted to uh, do. Yeah, and I yeah. thought that was dope. Every time I looked at when I looked at you and Taylor, I was like, man, they both went out here and did amazing. You know what amazing. I mean? That's crazy. crazy, man. I never could have wrote this out. Like right. I always say, bro, you blessed, man. What about yeah. physical therapy that you love so much? What what made you go into choose that field? All right, so the difference between um, being a physician or a general doctor and a physical therapist is because, let's say, I don't know, you hurt your shoulder, you think you tore your rotator cuff. You go to the orthopedic doctor, you go in there, you sit in the waiting room for a long time, then they finally call you back. You sit in the room back there for a long time. The doctor sees you for 30 seconds and walks out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, with a physical therapist, you come in and um, you talk to me. I evaluate you. And let's say I got to see you for six months of physical therapy, two, three times a week. I see you every day for 30 minutes to an hour. You know, I, every time you come to me for an appointment and we I, we build a bond, we build a connection. Um um, not just your physical therapist, but kind of getting your mental right as well. Because, you know, let's say you're an athlete, you can't play your sport or or you're an accountant and you can't type at the computer. You know, you can't do what you're used to doing. So um, a physical therapist gets to take you throughout that journey and be with you and spend a lot of time with the patient and, you know, kind of just be a good person and, you know, get people back to or even better from where they were, where they started. So PT was where it was at for me. Wow, man. When I first... When I seen you, man, and I seen you going through all that, and I seen you, you had the dopest, your college career, when you when you became the doctor, I felt like I had made it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I watched the, you know, I always, we follow each other on yeah. IG, and I like, man, <coughs> this boy here having a good time. Y'all party different, too. Y'all do it on another level, and y'all make it look good. You know, I ain't going to go too far, because she going to want to go into your childhood. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Don't, she going to get mad, but I'm I wanna, going there. No, I, yeah, because we, we started in... The beginning. Okay, let's go back. All right, all right, okay, all right. so as a child growing up, you you were raised with your mom and dad, right? Yeah. Yes. How many siblings? Uh, two older sisters and two younger brothers. I was the middle child. Middle yeah. child. Yeah. Okay. And the older one is a boy or girl. Uh, older sister. Two older, older sisters. sisters. Yeah. Okay. And um, you were raised here in Mesquite. Yeah, Mesquite, Texas. Okay. How did you like Mesquite? Mesquite was cool. You know, it was uh people think they hear Mesquite, they hear the suburbs. Yeah, it was the suburbs. But then you had, you know all kinds of people, you know, moving from, you know, different hoods in Dallas and coming to Mesquite. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to just um, experience, you know, you know, Pleasant Grove. People come from Oak Cliff, North Dallas, and, you know, come to a school. Mesquite wasn't soft, though, you know, but mm -hmm. um, we were um, able to kind of redirect and get away from that type of life and, you know, kind of choose the right path. Because there's not too many people from our high school that – even went to college or, you know, really? go on a professional love. Yeah, for real. Mm. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, that we grew up with, if they did go to college, you know, or I don't know. It's just 
Um, it's just a rare, you know, uh, percentage of people who went in, you know, did some some actually did know, what right, they wanted to right, do. Right, right, right. So it's it's honestly a blessing, you know. It's a it blessing. Is. You know. And as a child growing up, what did you want to be? You said you always wanted to be. Yeah, I wanted to be in the medical so, field for sure. You know, but why, school. as a child, you know, did you have anybody else in your family who was in the medical field? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, my dad, um, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I was born there. I came here when I was lived in London for one year, and then I came here. Um, when I was about four or five years old. Can you speak the language? I understand it fluently, and I speak, you know, conversationally. You know, Yoruba is where I'm from. You know, I'm, I'm this is my tribe, Yoruba. Okay. Um, so uh, I speak uh, speak a little bit, but I understand it um, fluently. Um, but my dad, he's a physician. He was an OBGYN back in Nigeria. But, you know, when you come here, it's almost like they don't respect that degree. You have, you have to get to certified it. all over again. Right, and my dad, he... Man, he he had to work at Seven Eleven. Go from having a being a uh, wow. OBGYN, having your own practice. He had his own practice out and there, go doing work very at well. Yeah, he came here so his children can have a better life. You mm -hmm. know, try to have more opportunities. You know, um, so he was working there. He even worked as a surgical tech, and the attending surgeons he was like God in their hands when they're delivering babies and teaching because he delivered thousands and thousands. And he started that path to start doing it again. So you're considered still an MD here, but you know after you become an MD, you have to get your do your residency and a fellowship. Right. And he already did that. And he started doing that, but it was taking a lot of time away it from his family. And he was like, you know what? Um, I choose my family over, you know, this career and money. And, you know, even though a lot of his friends were doing that, he chose to, you know, start his own business. And he was able to spend more time with his family. He really showed us the sacrifice, you know, it takes to, you know, raise a family and everything like that. And that family comes first. Right. Family comes first. So I just feel like success is my duty, you know, at this point. So did, he, did he ever it. mention to you, because out of curiosity, um, the difference between being an OBGYN there in Africa compared to, you know, um, med medical practices here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say probably there's a lot. You're under a microscope a lot more here in mm -hmm. America than you are in uh, Nigeria. To, um, you know, they, they have, you know, the same the medical. It's a worldwide language. So everybody speaks the same language. A, a doctor in China understands the same thing as a doctor here in in America, but you're just just a lot more regulations and rules, probably. More and the terminologies so might be different. Oh, no, terminology is the same. The human body is the same. Okay. God made, you know, any the same anatomy. It's a it's a it's a universal language. They're just gonna say it in another language. Right. But it's the same exact, you know, the same exact thing. You know, there may be advances in practices in in Europe or or mm -hmm. you know Australia or something like that. You know, and we kind of adopt some of those things and have our research here, but it's it's globally shared around the world. So. Um, that knowledge is one language, so it's a little bit of difference. But uh, as far as the difference between America and Nigeria, the yeah, the core is the same. Just probably just you're just more rules and regulations and things here, probably. So, so, that's so I see where I you that. where you got it. it's in the family. Oh yeah, my oldest sister as well. My oldest sister, she's 11 years older than me. Um, she's a um, gastroenterologist and she's a part owner of a practice out there. She's doing very well. Wow, oh, you that's know, so. Cool. It, so uh, that's yeah. crazy, man. Uh, I remember how your dad was. Uh, you always, I knew that when you were here, when you yeah. were young, yeah. that that structure was there. Oh yeah, you know, I I, I would, I could, I could hear Street. it in yeah, the in the in that. the even the little dating scene or whatever you yeah. were trying to accomplish. Yeah. You had to watch how you <laughs> how you did everything. Absolutely. And and how important is structure when you're growing up as a young man, uh, as a as a as a boy growing into a man to have that uh that structure there to say, hey man, you got to do it this way or that. That way oh man it's, it's very important as far as from a father right it's important because um um he kind of i always had to remember where i came from and who i was representing you know my last name i always had to remember that and who who who's my father you know so everything that i did I had to um had to keep that in mind that you know my dad wouldn't be happy if i did that you know my dad you know he wouldn't like that i did that and i kind of didn't understand it growing up like oh look at all my friends they get to they get to do this they get to you stay out being unfair yeah it's unfair like why do they get to go to this party mm -hmm. or go to do this but um you know you kind of look you know back and see those friends that got to do everything where are they now and then where are you now not to you know say anything bad about them mm -hmm. but it's it's all for a reason why he had to have that type of structure in our life, so it's very important to have that structure as a but man. But how as a father old were you up. when you realized that he was in college somewhere? College, to get definitely out. college. Yeah, <laughs> definitely college. Out. It was a long time long before I realized time. it. You know, it was really in college. Man, crazy story in college. You know, I went to a community college my first year. 
um, coming out of high school. I thought I was gonna play football. I didn't work out, you know. Yeah, I remember but, uh, you. I remember you at yeah. I know, remember nigga. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna play football, you know. Then you had Taylor over there. He had. 13 touchdowns, 1,300 <laughs> receiving yards. And I was a second lead receiver. I only had like two touchdowns, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he, he was clearly, you know, on another right. level. But, you know, football didn't work out. But, like, God always has a plan, plan for you. Yeah. You know, I went to college my first year at UNT. Um, I was away from my parents. I didn't go to a dorm because I was a sophomore going in. So I went straight to an apartment. They dropped me off, left, and I looked around like, Man, I'm I'm here. I'm here by, by myself. myself. <laughs> you know, like I don't have no curfew, no time. rules. You know. Did you go wild? I I, I, I went a little bit. I went a little bit wild. Like for instance, um, I'll be in class physically, but I wouldn't be there mentally. mentally. I'm thinking about the wrong thing, thinking about girls, or thinking about what parties or what's going on. You know, what were we hanging out after class and things like that. You know, and and, and I share this with people because uh, uh, success is not a linear path. It's just not a straight straight path. Uh, my first semester uh, was at 2010 at UNT. Okay. I had a 1.384 GPA. Wow. You, know, and you didn't even in, try. <laughs> you know, uh, you focused coming, on the wrong thing. You know, I was, I was focused on the wrong thing. I had Fs and Ds and, you know, um, and my parents, they, they were like they didn't even know GPAs could get that low. <laughs> what know? did they say? You what know, your dad you know, say? Like, maybe you should go out and be a mechanic or oh, something. Oh, they like, <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, hit me with that. You know, maybe school's not for everybody. You know, because he was like, man, I giving up hope on this guy. Like, what's going? I mean, he didn't give up on me, but right. like, man, like reverse you just, psychology. You, just, you never yeah. know. Like, so I remember it was that fall semester. My first fall semester at UNT did terrible. That Christmas break was the worst. But then uh, they was trying to tell my counselor at the time, like, um, maybe we shouldn't keep him at home, go to community college and things like that. And the counselor told my parents, you know, at the end of the day, yes, he can do that, but it's his decision. You know, it's, you know, he's an adult now. You know, they try to guide you as mm -hmm. much as they can. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. Your parents are still your parents, so they want to guide you. And then they kind of showed me that, um, you know, this is you. I realized when I made that decision that I realized I was like, man, no matter what, my name's going to be on that degree, you know, or, you know, my, or it's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's not going to be my parents' name, it's not going to be anybody else. Once I realize that, that success is up to me or whatever I do is up to me and nobody's going to be affected really but me, that's when I just, I just went hard, you know. I went hard at school, uh, it, and it's hard to bring up your GPA from that low. From that, right. So like, even as many A's as you get, it just, boop, just, you know, goes up just bit, a little yeah. bit, you know. So do some extra credit somewhere. Extra credit, retaking classes, you know, doing everything. Summer school, you know, mm -hmm. I was going to school year-round, fall, spring, winter semester, everything, you know, uh, just to try to get that GPA back up. And I also found a fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. That was okay. really my step from uh, going from a boy to a man, you know, because you have to have a certain GPA. Yeah, and a brotherhood. Yeah, and a brotherhood, and you have to have that certain GPA, and all those guys were doing good. So um, that made me, really gave me that another motivation to get my GPA. I was mm -hmm. supposed to play football at UNT, but because of that um, GPA, I couldn't even try to walk on to try out. Mm -hmm. And I think that was all in God's plan, God, too, man. you know, because exactly. I found physical therapy for real. And, you know, I was kind of into it, you know, but then I really found, like, okay, this is what I got to do. I started looking at schools, and you got to have this GPA. I joined the Physical Therapy Student uh, Association uh, club, pre-physical therapy club wow. at UNT. Mm -hmm. um, and they got, you know, schools come talk to us and this is the GPAs you have to have. And it's really competitive to get into PT school. You, uh, there's only 50 spots per year. It's a, it's a yearly, you know, um, it's a yearly, um, what's the core of uh, students that they accept every year. It's about 50 to 60 students, probably less than that, you know. Wow, well, you see year. so many practices popping up everywhere. You'd think right, that right. they'll allow a lot more than just yeah, that. Yeah, so they have, uh, they have, you know, they have, I want to say, they're starting to bring a lot of more schools to Texas, but let's say around like five to seven physical therapy schools in Texas, only mm. accepting 50 students a wow. year. is extremely competitive, you know. Wow. So if you don't have like, 3.8 to 4.0 GPA, they don't even, you know, they're just not even looking at you. So I had to think about, okay, I had to kind of tell my story, let them know who I was, mm -hmm. go from, you know, going to these schools. I used, man, going to, I know we, I'm, I'm skipping, you know, go I'm getting to this physical ahead. therapy school. But uh, from that GPA, getting it up, you know, getting my GPA up, graduating, uh, applying to school. I didn't get in my first, my first try coming out of school. Wow. 
Um, I try to, and that's what I want to really just kind of push that because people think, you know, you're just like saying success. Just get in there. Just get in, you know, wherever you need to go. But, you know, failure, without tasting the bitter taste of failure, you can never truly appreciate, you know, the sweetness of success. Success. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that failure of uh, not getting into, like, I mean, I kind of did my application kind of last minute. I applied to one school. It was UNT Health Science Center in Fort Worth, and I didn't get in. um, But then I kind of, went back and I looked at all things, called the school, say what did I do wrong and where can I improve? And I really would work closely with that counselor. I probably bothered her, you know, I went up, drove to Fort Worth and kind of have her go over my resume and my classes. It's like, well, maybe to retake this class, retake this class. So I moved I moved to Houston right after I graduated UNT, December 2013, just for a fresh start, get away from everything and just kind of just grind. and. I, I locked in. I was working at uh, Best Buy at the time, and I was going on a, a physical therapy school tour. Like, I would drive around all schools around Texas. What department in Best Buy? Uh, computers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> computers, yeah. Back there with them uh, yeah. with them apples. and yeah. yeah, he over there with them old, old deals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. could come in there and get you would lie to me. <laughs> That's what they do in there. Yeah, like, uh, I well, just know everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah. Know? I, you, you got this much RAM on it. Oh, you know, I mean, you know how many computers I said, oh, yeah, I got this computer at home. You know, <laughs> just like I sell a computer, man. I ain't had that computer. I loved it, man. You know? I know when I go in there what I'm about, about to deal with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something, no, don't get it twisted. It's something show. They, oh, they know I, yeah. what they're talking about, but you know, and I learned as I was going about the computers and everything. But um, yeah, man, I was working at Best Buy. Um, I got a little internship um, working. Um, that's what actually before Best Buy, I got an internship when I first got to Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a home health physical therapist. Okay, and I was just I was driving in my car full of everything that I owned at that time driving around different places in Houston, kind of peeping out the window, making sure nobody's breaking in my car, yeah. telling my stuff I was sleeping on my friend's couch. Hey, just for an opportunity, stuff, you know, man. just for an opportunity. That's all I wanted to uh, try to get faith. to school. Absolutely. Stepping out on faith. Um, so I was shadowing. I did that for about two two months or so. Um, and then that's when I started working at Best Buy. But it helped me get some shadowing hours you know, kind of building my story. I what did like, what your dad think about this? Because you now giving yeah. it a hell of a go. Oh yeah, my dad was like he didn't he didn't understand me moving to Houston without a plan, without a goal. Like you know, my brother in law, my sister lived out there. And uh, that's about it, you know. Um, you know, so I had some frat brothers. Sort of, kind of comfortable because you had family. Yeah, yeah out I had there. family there and everything. So that was cool. My aunt lived out there. My cousin lived out there. So um, I was just, I was, but I was really like, hey, I'm just gonna move out here for a fresh start, and I'm, I'm still gonna get into school. You know, he kind of didn't really understand like a full plan, but like, hey, you're a man. You know, I'm, we're here to support you. My dad's always there to support me throughout anything I needed. What did your you mom know? say? So this whole time I'm yeah. hearing dad, dad, dad. What yeah. happened to mom? Yeah, oh my mom's there. So I grew up. I grew up with my stepmother, who stepped in that role at a young age of five um, to become really like my mom. You know, she's the one who really helped me become the gentleman that I am today. She she helped me. Um, with etiquette, you know, she taught me, you know, oh, you know, when someone don't be eating at everybody's house, you know, <laughs> or just because somebody offers you something for free doesn't mean you have to accept it, you know, it's free, you know. So she gave me a lot of my core principles that I take with me to this day, and I appreciate her for taking care, you know, uh, of somebody who wasn't her biological son, but to me, like, yeah. yeah. so my real mother, so I don't think anybody, a lot of people really don't know this about me. So my, my birth mother um, lives in Nigeria still, okay, you know, and, uh, um, her and my father divorced and uh, got to I got to here in uh, Texas mm-hmm. and um, you know we kind of I didn't have no cell phone or nothing so maybe like my junior year of high school people used to make fun of me at that wow but uh, I remember <laughs> I so to, have you met I used to memorize everybody yeah I haven't I haven't seen her since I was uh, four years old but we we talk you know she's uh, as, as um, involved as she can she calls me talks to me you know. Um, you know, it's not easy living in Nigeria. So, so you haven't taken a trip to Nigeria? Not yet, not yet, really? yeah. So as, as you can see, I've been a professional student, you yeah. know, going from no, high he school he gave to college right. to, to try to do my So when are you going? Um, I'm I'm planning to go on next next year. This next year, so that's going to be starting emotional. this clinic. Yeah, oh yeah, I can't even imagine. When you see imagine. her for the first time? I want to be able to, um, you know, go over there and really make an impact, you know, kind of help her out, take care of her, you know, um, show her, you know, um, that her son, you know, has been working to be able to do this for you, you know. So, That's dope, you man. know, so I want to be able to do that. So, like, um, my mom definitely, she is always there supporting me academically as well, too, to 
um, um, get there. My stepmom, you know, she's right. been there, and I don't even ever really call her my stepmom. I noticed that. I call her my mom. Because she's been there with me the whole time. Five, right. Yeah. So people don't even know that's my stepmom. That's my, you know. So I never knew right. it when you was here, but I would always see how hard your dad pushed you, mm -hmm. and I and and I thought about my dad, and I understood. You know, because right. I know that they care. They just doing what they feel Absolutely. is the best for you. Did you Absolutely. do you have all the siblings over there? Oh no! Well, my mom actually, mom my mom. I just yeah. found out like a couple of years ago or so that my mom had a, another son. So, um, so I have a brother over there in Nigeria. So, um, uh, I want to be able to go over there and help them out as much oh. as I can, make sure they're set up and they're taken care of as well. So, um, but yeah, so my mom definitely here. That's good. You know, definitely pushed me to get to that next level and, and go forward. So, you know, going back to Houston, you know, I was able to you know, go on my physical therapy tour and just, it's crazy. Like when you want something and you like, just go for it. Like just the, the jump, the, the God is going, people say the universe. I wanted to say you reverse, replace the universe with God. God but, yeah. but like everything that's working in, in the powers that may be work together to make that goal possible. As long as you put all your energy, all your effort into that goal. So like I was driving to every physical therapy school. I, I remember I drove to Texas State from Houston one time. It was like a little two hour drive or some two and a half hour drive for like a 10, 15 minute meeting, you know, and I drive right gotta back. Gotta do what you gotta do. You know, I was going all around just so they could see my face that, yeah, my GPA may not be as high as everybody else's, but you know, I got thousands of hours of shadowing in different settings of physical therapy. I actually understand the field. I have a passion for this, you know, and that's what I was doing while I was in Houston, taking full advantage of that. And I was able to get in my second try uh, to physical therapy school to, you know, I got into a couple of schools, you know, so it was a good opportunity. And I chose uh, TWU Houston. Um, it was just uh, the top physical therapy school in the state of Texas. And I think it's like number twenty something in the nation now, you know. Oh, wow. and so it's uh it's 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 really it's a really good school. It's almost unnecessarily too difficult, you know, mm -hmm. that school. But <laughs> they really prepare their their PTs to go out into the world and, and help people. But I chose that school because they were doing uh something to get more minorities into the right. field of, of physical therapy. So I chose that school because I knew it was gonna be dang, dang there anybody that looked like me in that school and it wasn't, it was Could just me it. and my roommate, mm. you know, and I had another classmate too as well, um, uh, another female, but as far as like uh, black males like us, it was me and my roommate, and it was another another guy out of like 50 some students, you know, so we couldn't really relate. Luckily I had him, you know, um, and my other roommate. Was that you know, difficult though, going to school with it only just Did you experience, oh, yeah. did you have some experiences? Oh yeah, like for sure, you know, with, um, to this day, you know, all the way up to now, you know, people like, the, the higher you go, the less people going to look like you, you know? Yeah, I know. So, uh, especially in the medical field, you know? Yeah. So, it's like you got to prove yourself yeah. a lot, you know? So, going through school, you know, I had to prove, like, sometimes I thought I didn't belong because these kids, they they're, they had a lot of preparation going into physical therapy school. A lot of them had anatomy classes and stuff before, you know, and, and like, more in depth. And, you know, me, I was out of school for a little bit. I graduated 2013. I didn't get in school to 2015. Mm -hmm. I had to take all these prerequisite classes, retake classes to qualify, you know. Um, so these kids that were fresh out of school, all this stuff is fresh on their brain. And with me, I just kind of didn't uh, get it as quick. But once I got it, hey. I got it better than anybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's kind of was – it was a little discouraging. Like, they're going in there and they're naming all these uh, – uh, muscles, bones, joints, and ligaments, and tendons in the body, and I'm like, man, I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. I remember I going in, so that we had this little locker room um, um, that we'll get ready to get into an anatomy lab to go because we actually looked at real human bodies, cadavers, and dissected the bodies, and that's how we learned the anatomy of the human body. So wow. every bone, joint, nerve, tendon, ligament, gross. yeah. <laughs> We had to learn that on the same level. And people don't know as far as physical therapy. I want to give people a lot of knowledge. Even y'all about physical therapy. Right. You know, um, physical therapists, we're, we're trained to speak um, about the human body on the same level as, the you know, of the, as the doctors. So we take anatomy and physiology. And some schools, they take it with the medical students, you know, so we can learn on that same level. Because, um, like, when a surgeon does surgery, he needs to be able to talk to me you know, as a um, as an equal, as a pair, you know, to understand what's going on with his patient, you know. So uh, as a physical therapist, we are the go-to practitioners uh, to the musculoskeletal system as it relates to movement, mm -hmm. you know. So um, that's what we do. Like, say somebody gets surgery, you know, you're going to go, like, you're going to 
110 percent you know uh, go to a physical mm-hmm. therapist mm-hmm. you know what i mean to recover to because recover, all of right. that seizes up if you don't you know right. get if the you exercise don't do that you rehab need to. right right, right. Any, any of these athletes you know that tore their acl or anything like that the surgeon does a surgery but it, it's like a hand-in-hand thing you cannot get back like odell when he turns acl you know adrian peterson back in the day you know, or co- anybody that well, had any kind of injury. Let me, ask, let, let me ask you something. Uh, who was some, because I see you with a lot of the in, NFL players. Who are some of the guys that you've uh, pretty much uh, helped to, you know, helped them with their uh, physical Recovery. therapy? Recovery. Man, uh, of course, you know, Taylor Gabriel. For I helped sure, Taylor, Taylor Gabriel. Um, I helped um, Rashard uh, Higgins. He's uh, okay. with the Browns you right now. You worked with him before? Yeah. Um, um, I worked with who else? Uh, Marlon Brown. He's retired as well. He played for the uh, Ravens. He played for the Broncos and the Bears with Taylor. Um, man, who else I work with? I worked with. Um, man, I can't even. I can't even think, think of everybody. Of them. Right I know. I've seen you work with head. a lot of them. Um, yeah, I worked. I worked with a lot of people, man. Um, Quincy had a boy Joe. He played for the Ravens and the Patriots. Like I work. I work with a lot of um, a lot of people. Uh, Man, who else? Oh, Tevin Coleman right now. Uh, I worked I worked with him, man. I, and Let me I ask you this. What was the most basketball. extreme, and I don't mean to cut you off, yeah, but did, the extreme yeah. case where you've seen somebody that was really, really just, it was tough for him to come back. Man, uh, I like think Like in about, that movie with Queen Latifah when yeah, she. Yeah, <laughs> it was tough, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think about my boy. Um, he he is a, a basketball player, and then when he um, came, and when yeah. he came back, it was full swing. Yeah, like uh, man, actually, man, now, now I'm starting to think of people. Uh, it was uh, man, there's a couple of stories that just popping up in my head, <laughs> um, pop up in my head, man. But um, for instance, like I, I I've been recently working with a lot of uh, SMU uh, football players. Okay, um, I didn't know exactly, man. Talk about God putting opportunities in front hey, of you, man. man. Like SMU multi million dollar facility, yeah, you yeah. know. And I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing, posting on Instagram, but people are watching and noticing. And uh, one of the coaches from SMU noticed that what I was doing, and he said, you know, I want them to come to you. You know, I, I trust you in what you do. So um, I was able to work with their starting running backs. Mm-hmm. They had like this one-two punch combo in the back uh, in the backfield at SMU. I didn't even know who they were, honestly, at that point. You know, I was just helping some young guys get get better. So uh, uh, so uh, I was able to help. Both of them, they both of them had ankle injuries to where they weren't playing. Okay. Their first game back, they combined for four touchdowns. So hey. it was crazy. Wow. After that, you know, I got to meet head coach Sunny Dykes, which is now the TCU head coach. So I'll be working with them as well. Man. So, That's cool. but um, but yeah, I was able to meet Coach Dykes and uh and and Coach Rashawn Samples, uh, you know, the the young samples, you know, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. up and coming, young yeah, legend. I, I just training, heard you know? we just told about mm-hmm. him by the yeah. other guy that was here. But majority of your clientele are athletes. So I wouldn't say, see, that's and that's another misconception that's what too. I was so um, athletes are kind of the cherry on top, you know, mm-hmm. of, of what I do, and they they really help with the marketing as well. Mm-hmm. I see that because people are like, man, if these pro and collegiate athletes can trust you with their bodies, um, you know, me, you know, as a the general population, I could trust you as well. That's right. So the general population is really what keeps the door, you know, swinging. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's who, that's who, that's my bread and butter. You that's know? what I be thinking. I'm thinking right. is like the car wrecks. Because that's who mm-hmm. go to the physical therapy right. or chiropractor. What's the difference between a physical therapist and a chiropractor? That's a very good question. Mm-hmm. Um, chiropractors and physical therapists have a lot of overlap in what they do. Um, both, you know, use you know holistic medicine, basically using the, the body to kind of heal itself. You know, chiropractors are a lot. Um, they deal with the spine a lot. That's a lot what they learn in, in school. A lot of hands-on. Lot of they're experts in all the manipulations of the spine from, you know, head to toe. And uh, physical therapists, we learn a lot of that stuff too, um, but we kind of touch on it in school. So I did a, a residency where I specialized in sports and orthopedics where I learned a lot more. But physical therapists more so help with the rehab of your body through through exercise and understanding, you know, we, so we, there's physical therapists where orthopedic side, which what I do, like somebody, um, ACL tear, hip replacement surgery, rotator cuff, you know, I do that. And then they have neurophysical therapy when somebody has a spinal cord injury where they're in a wheelchair, they're trying to teach people how to walk again, or they have a traumatic brain injury or a stroke. They're going to see a physical therapist or you have home health physical therapies, you know, you have pediatric who work with kids. So we help, basically get people 
um, optimize their movement, help them move in good. Like, let's say you hurt your knee, it's, it's hard for you to walk. I teach you how to walk, run, jump again, you know what I'm saying? So we rehab in that aspect, you know, versus the chiropractor. So most car wrecks right. go to chiropractors and not <clears throat> physical therapists. Right. For physical mo- therapists. For most of the, the, but it depends. But they can, let's say they can you got a car wreck and you, you know, you fracture your your shoulder or something, you got to get surgery, or you don't have to get surgery. You're going to go to a physical therapy to rehab so you could use your shoulder again, your arm mm. again. So that's what's going to go. Like, let's say if you have, I seem like a lot of people, like, go to chiropractors, you have a neck pain um, after that, and, you know, you need some adjustments, stuff like that, they're going to go to a chiropractor. But physical therapists could also take care of you as well. There's a lot of great chiropractors out there, you know. Shout out to good all my boys that's doing chiropractor, Dr. Andrew Jackson, you know. Yeah, my boy, yeah, my boy Adrian, so blessed, Dr. So blessed. Adrian, you know, there's some there's some really good chiropractors out there, you know, um, DeAndre, Dr. Diamond Minifield. So there's a lot of good chiropractors, you know, for sure, and they're doing some great work. We're just we're just um just both helping people get better and you know, but just a little bit of difference in what we do. Okay. You know, being a, being that okay, I seen you. And I see this on uh, Snapchat. You know, I'm crazy. I just, yeah. I'm thinking about the stuff that kind of weirded me out. Yeah. There are these suction cups on these folks' backs. Oh, yeah. And it looked yeah. like they just popping out. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. And I'm saying yeah. to myself, what the hell is that? Yeah. And it leave a red mark. I'm saying, yeah. that got to hurt. It relieves yeah. pressure. So I'm trying to figure out. Oh, let yeah. the, I got Slow. the man here today. I don't need you to <laughs> tell. I this man went to school <laughs> for years for this. I, I am walking up on the moment of my question to the Doctor himself over physical therapy and <laughs> Mr. Maker want to answer the question. <laughs> now I want to know what song. that does, man. Like, and, yeah. and how long does it take to work? And I, I might need to get me some cups on my back. Yeah, is that what they call them cups? Yeah, cupping. Yeah, cupping okay. therapy. What is so, that? Cupping. So it's a, it's just a modality that's used to uh, help optimize movement as well. So, like I said, I did a residency that I learned. So I'm a certified sports and orthopedic manual therapist. So um, basically, I'm, I worked to learn like hands-on manual. Wait a minute, technique. say that again. So I can't really. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, just, I know he said it so yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's get it one more time. S O M T. So certified sports and orthopedic manual therapist. So, okay. So I, I've trained in advanced techniques how to use my hands to help people. You know, you know, get better. You know, other than you know the rehab uh, with exercises and things like that. Wow. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, with with the cupping, it's just basically another tool that's used to help increase blood flow, you know, in a sense, help break up some scar tissue and adhesions within the muscle tissue and the skin, um, help decrease pain, things like that to help, you know, with movement and things like that. That's what cupping does, you know, so Thank that's you. what that is. Yeah, I seen it. They they get a lot of views on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, I'm being real. Yeah. I see it. I, yeah. You probably don't see it. I yeah. see it. They get a whole section where they just yeah. show that stuff popping off people's back. Yeah. You've seen it? Yeah. No. So a, a lot it? of people, a lot of people kind of overdo it. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just meant to kind of help. It's not, it's not cupping. is not going to heal you on its own. Okay. You know, honestly, it's not going to heal you on its own. It's just a tool like dry needling is another thing that I do, which is kind of like acupuncture. Yeah. Say, yeah. You know, that's when they put all them needles. I can do right. it, That looks, look like it hurts. No, nah, I mean, you might feel painful. the initial prick, but it's very thin needle, but it's another thing to increase blood flow, kind of send a cortical response to the brain to uh, send that message to whatever area that that's in pain or, or or that needs healing that hey this area needs blood flow it needs nutrients it needs you know it needs healing you believe you know, in that, that. so yeah. it works absolutely it's there's science behind everything that i do i'm a i'm a doctor so that, that everything that i do has to be backed by it some kind of back. research yeah. and it's not just oh this is supposed to help but there's also there's been hundreds of research articles done on anything that i do whether that's exercise you know like just like you so that people ask oh doctor you can pre- write me a prescription no I'm not that type of. I'm not a physician. I'm. A, I'm. I have a clinical doctorate. Um, so the difference between that, just because, you know, just like your doctor prescribes you medicine, you know, I prescribe you exercise to help that shoulder get back. So I know that t- I know I've been. I studied tendon healing times. I know at what point in time is it okay for you to lift your shoulder. I know what point in time is it okay to add some weight resistance, or should we just be doing just active range of motion? You just lifting it by yourself. I know. <clears throat> what ranges of motion is supposed to be throughout each, you know, okay, the first six weeks we're just going to do this, and then after that, next week we're going to do this. So there's a, you don't just rehab all, there's there's a science and a method behind everything that you do. There's a protocol that these surgeons have and physical therapists should be aware of 
when rehabbing somebody, whether it's an ankle injury, back surgery, knee surgery, anything like that, from head to toe. So there's a there's a science behind it. I think that's another thing that again separates chiropractors from physical mm-hmm. therapists. So where you we know that protocol of you know not to say that phys- a chiropractor can't learn that right you know but um you know the surgeon you know entrusts us with the protocol of when to do what with each patient depending on the specific injury that you know they they occur so. occurs yeah so yeah, let me ask you this in physical therapy uh, if you practice it here can you go to another state and do the same thing there's all over different places right so so man you quizzing me on my physical therapy practice <laughs> at, you know but yes uh i just got, took my jurisprudence exam not too long ago to okay. renew my license every two years we gotta renew our license okay. or whatever. but so you could go practice in another state but then um, it depends on how long. Like if you're moving there, you gotta apply. You could apply for a temporary license because there's travel physical therapists and stuff like that. So they'll okay. go to different states. And you could practice for a certain amount of time. But if, you know, if you're staying there, you gotta apply for a license in that state. Different it's things dope. like that. So, but yeah. So yeah, we could. Like I could travel and you know and see different teams and you know like the athletes and stuff. Like I would travel and you know like I'm going to Detroit. You know, um, Tuesday actually. Mm, really you know, gotta to go do some work. Yeah, right, right. right. So. Um, so there's different things that, you know, we could do with, uh, in different states, you know, but it just depends on how long you're going to be in that state before you have to apply for a license. Yeah, because I've been to a chiropractor and I've been to a physiotherapist. And um, I remember at a physical therapist, I felt like I, they were working me out more and not putting me on machines. Right. You know what right, I mean? Because when right. I go to a chiropractor, they hook me up to all of these and they <clears> say, <throat> okay, now stay right there for 30 minutes and, right. and, then, and then you're, you're done. done. Yeah, <laughs> you're done. So I say physical therapy is more... Um, we're, we're hands on as well. We're hands on. And then you'll do, we'll, we, my job, I always tell people my job is for me, is for you not to need me anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, some people say, man, I've been going to my chiropractor for six months, man. I love him. Like, dang, you going to take chiropractor <laughs> for the same neck pain for six months. You ain't right. better yet. You know? So like my job is, you know, to, I'm a evaluate every patient. I don't just, you don't just come in and we just start working. I'm going to, you're going to understand that I understand what's going on with you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to let you know, okay, this is what, from what you're telling me, I think that this is what's my working hypothesis on what's going on. And then after that, then I'm going to back it up with some special tests, you know, to see, okay, is this what I'm going to do like two tests to see to, um, kind of back up my hypothesis. And if it's sure that this is what it is, then we're going to come up with a plan to a rehab plan to then rehab you and get you back to what you want to like. I have you, I know your goals mm-hmm. from talking to you. Then I we come up with a plan to get you right. So then that includes hands on stuff. That includes, you know, in house, you know, exercises, therapeutic exercises, neuromuscular re education, different things like that. And then I'm gonna give you a home exercise program because you only see me two or three days out the week. What about the time when you're not seeing me? Yeah. You know, we could lose all what we've gained. So I give people a home exercise program. I Three, two or three exercises to do because if I give them more, they ain't gonna do it. No, they ain't doing that. So I give them just some simple that they understand that why they're doing it to get rid of this neck pain or this Mm -hmm. back pain and it's helping. They see that progress and they understand that I understand them. You know, so again, that's why I chose physical therapy. I get to connect with people and they get to see. Yeah, you've always been a people's person. mm -hmm. But in order for them to come and see you, do they have to get um, a recommendation from a a referral from a doctor or can somebody just walk through your door and say, I need to see a physio- physical therapist? Um, both. So now in the state of Texas, um, you can see we have direct access now. So where um, you can walk in and for 10 consecutive days, you could get um, physical therapy from physical therapy. Now after a residency training, they went to a resident like me. So I'm a specialist in sports and orthopedics. Now I can see people for, I believe it's 14 days. So two weeks, um, I can see people before they need a physician referral and then um, a physician refer them over. But how, like, for instance, how we keep our, like, if you want to keep that revolving door mm-hmm. versus just people just walking in, it's good to have a, um, a yeah referring physician, whether that's an orthopedic surgeon, a pain management doctor, podiatrist, whatever it may be that um, sees patients. Because put like this, if you walk into a, a doctor, orthopedic doctor, and like, man, man, doc, man, my back's been hurting for the past six months, man. I, I don't know what's going on. And if he thinks that, okay, it's not bad enough for him to have to operate on your back, he may give you some some pain medicine, whether it's steroid, dose pack, or mm-hmm. any kind of pain medicine or something like that, or may not give you that or say, hey, you need to go to a physical therapist. Let's try physical therapy for six weeks or so or whatever the physical therapist thinks is appropriate for you. And then, 
if you're good with that, then we're good. Surgery should always be a last resort. Right. I'm mean, a lot of people. I, I want to really that. educate the people on that. Just because your shoulder hurts, you know, doesn't mean automatically surgery. Yeah, yeah, Rotate you know, the cuff and all that. Multi, my yeah. partner did that. He been going back. He never yeah. got his shoulder back right. right. But some people are just lazy. They just want a quick mm -hmm. fix right. with anything that they do. And the thing is, is it a quick fix? Because you're going, uh, like you said, like you're going to get that surgery, get but it's not back to where it it, 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 it was ever, you know, where it used Sometimes to be. Sometimes it don't even get back you know to where it was before you got exactly. the operation. Exactly, exactly. So a, it got to go hand in hand. Can a patient then, okay, I go into the doctor, I'm having the shoulder pain and so mm -hmm. forth, and they said, okay, I need physical therapy. Right. Can I say to them, well, can you refer me to this doctor? Absolutely, absolutely. They can, it's all the patient's choice to where they want to go to. You know, a surgeon, sometimes they could recommend where they want you to go. You know, I got a couple of surgeons that um, have seen my work and they, they trust my work. Because it's all about a surgeon, they want to look good, honestly. Mm -hmm. Because they do your shoulder surgery, they want it's all about good, having good patient outcomes. Like, okay, this sh this patient was able to go back and use his shoulder and do what he did after I did the surgery. You know, so the physical therapist helps the surgeon with that. So you have a good surgeon, you got to have a good physical therapist. Because mm -hmm. then if you don't, and let's say, uh, you somebody's got a total knee replacement and they can't bend their knee, you know, to get into their car, or get into the tub and they shower. Little small things like that affect you, you know. And if you know you're not going to good physical therapy, you can't get that from just the surgery. Right. You know, you got to have that rehab and getting back right, you know, consistently. So yes, um, a patient can say yes. I want to go to you know Dr. Emmanuel Fasania, Dr. Eda PT, and come to Eda PT alliance. is what I'm calling. Y'all <laughs> like yeah. that. Yeah. So Eda PT. What your dad have to say about you um, now? Now, now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we yeah, we back. Oh man. yeah, my my dad is very proud of, of where I am now. You know, and uh, I kind of follow in his footsteps because he um, he opened his own practice as well back in Nigeria. You know, I, I got his blood flowing through my veins. So that's the same thing. Like right after school, I did that residency. So I worked for a year. And then right after that residency, um, I went into opening my concierge PT. You know, and that's another story right there because talking about being, I was the I was working at a clinic to where it was one of the top in, in Dallas, um, working with a cowboy surgeon, the maverick surgeon. That's dope. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I got to learn a lot there. Um, Man. And, um, you know, but I was the only one, only one, not man, like, one, like only, you know, person that looked like me mm -hmm. in that, in that building. I already know. You know, um, so I, you know, I dealt with, you know, and I'm dealing with the Highland Park, you know, population, you yeah. know, and everything like that. So I'm learning a lot, you know, um, but then at the same time, I got to prove a lot, you know, show that I know what I'm talking about. Here comes this young black dude and there's a CEO of this company coming in and, oh, you know, you're the one who's doing my rehab, you know. But then when they get me, man, they loved me up there. You know, they loved me. All the patients did, you know, but. Have you, you ever know. had somebody walk out just because they saw who oh, you yeah. were? You know, oh, yeah. Oh, I had yeah. some people try oh, to change yeah. therapists because, like, you know, they'll say, oh, they prefer working with a woman or something. like. But I knew what it was. You know, you what, know what I is. mean? I knew exactly what it was, man. Man, it's crazy. At the end of that, at the end, I wasn't even supposed to jump into entrepreneurship that fast or that full time. But at the end of my residency, I thought I was going to be hired on because, you know, the patients loved me. To, so I never had any problems with any of the surgeons. But then, you know, the lady just, you know, I came in for my review and she said, well, um, I want you to know the position has been filled. Long story short, I'll tell you the position has been filled and we, uh, we won't be renewing your, you know, wow. you know, with us. I'm God, like, look at God. I kind of I kind of sat back and I just kind of smiled and she's like, I guess she expected a different reaction out of me, you know, but I knew what it was, you know, and. All the all the other therapists, they they were you know they were sad. They they wanted me to stay, and the patients wanted me to stay. I got a whole bunch of cards and and letters from patients. I got owner of multiple Chick Fil A's wrote me a letter of recommendation. Ain't no way you wouldn't want that person to stay, you know. But God had other plans. Man, you know? God had a hey and now that, now I see the Elite Alliance. Oh yeah, that's part me to join you Elite know, Alliance. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I, I I plan on being a sponsor for that too. They ain't gonna get away from me. I'm sponsoring <laughs> everything. Yeah, they gonna call and me. And when is this opening? I'm shouting this. So out. we're looking to open it in March. So it, it kind of accelerated my entrepreneur journey. I plan on doing it later on, you know. Yeah. But uh, after that happened, you know, I accelerated my journey, and and here we are. And that happened. Last time I worked for a, a company was October 16, 2020. Mm. You know, I've been a full time entrepreneur since then, doing my oh. own thing. So now we have Elite Alliance Physical Therapy. March. 
Where? Yeah. Do you have a location? So we're going to be, yeah, we already, you know, uh, got the location in the Dallas Medical District across from UT Southwestern Park. Perfect. Perfect. Children's so, area. so Perfect. all I know is I'm, when you get ready to open up, when y'all get you got to come back on the show. Okay. You got to let us know that you're opening. Absolutely. All that's got to happen. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. I got to be a sponsor for that too. Oh, yeah, for the grand yeah, opening. I'm a, yeah, be yeah. There, I'll yeah. be there for the grand opening. Oh, I'm yeah. a sponsor. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, y'all not getting away from me, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all not. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and uh, I think we got something we want to give you. Um, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have an award we would like to present to you. Oh, wow. It says presented to Dr. Emmanuel B. Fasania. Wow. It has your PT, your D, DPT, all wow. of that on wow. there. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. How did you say All it? of that. Yeah. All of that on there. <laughs> <laughs> she can't read it. It says in recognition of of your determination set forth to accomplish goals of becoming a doctor in PT wow. then achieving it at such a young age. Man, wow. Wow. say, man, we know you dedicated your heart to what you do. Wow. Man. And and we love you, man. That you know that love. already. Wow. At the end of the Thank day, we'll, so we, we'll never forget what God... Wow. See, God put us through That's something, crazy. man. Say, man. Say, we always... Listen, man, wow. we know already what God did with y'all was remarkable for us to see. Yeah. That's what y'all, we want y'all to know. That's why we always we we was always fans from behind the scenes. We might not been at every event, and not knew what was going on, but we love what God put in our life. All the people that God put through us, the, you know, the system that we've seen. And it, it's been a few more. You think it's just you and uh, your boy Taylor, but I got some more people that God put through this store for some mm. reason. Mm-hmm. He wanted me to touch him. Right. And, and and I got to touch guys like y'all, man, and, and in a way to where I understood. Y'all taught me something. And that's the difference when you taught me wow. something. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. And, and 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 that's what I needed to keep going. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank nah, you. No, man, we love you. You taught man. me something. I, I was able you to say see. I put you in designer. Huh? Man, you put me in my first designer, <laughs> man. You also you taught me you were a black man that owned something. You know what wow. I mean? So it, it it let me see that as well. Let all of us see that, and we all became that at a certain point in time in our life. So we appreciate that. We appreciate I y'all. It's all black love, man. We man, yeah, too. yeah. Y'all so seen that earlier. That. I, don't, yeah. I showed y'all how y'all supposed to hold that. it down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We saw that real early. So I really appreciate y'all for being role models to us. Man, in thank so, you thank so you. much, man. Like I say, man, you couldn't wrote this out, man. I love you. Um, I, love you too, like, man. I know you I know you already know you can come yeah. here if you ever need me, man. And uh, I'm going to be watching and I'm going to be, uh, what they call it, liking. Mm-hmm. Now you like things. Yeah, Back but in the day when y'all was here, uh, was Facebook even going? It wasn't yeah, going strong. It wasn't Facebook. going strong. It was Instagram. That yeah, yeah, it was no, but MySpace. You got to think, we talking about 09. MySpace. 09. Yeah, yeah. We was on Fa- Facebook probably came later on, probably like, oh, it, oh 09, bro. Oh, 09 is, 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 is yeah. it, it, it barely was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Zuckerberg hadn't got it all the way together yeah. yet. We ain't get our Instagram to college. Like That's right. That's so, right, man. Yeah. So, man, I just want yeah. to tell you thank you for coming on the show. We yeah. love you, brother. And yeah. we love too. the men that you yeah. you both you, you, have become. You came to be the guy like me. Yeah, yeah, let's just be real. Yeah. Because <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> the whole time we're doing the interview, I'm, I'm looking at him, I'm like, that voice, he's now a man. Yeah, he, he a man. He never had that deep voice when he went out. He well, it was kind of deep. It was kind of deep. Yeah. Yeah. The boy could, hey, he was a dancing dude. They had I it know, going I on. That. You know, in Dallas, we like to boogie a little bit. Oh, yeah, dance, it was going man. down, man. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Okay, Emmanuel, we here at Boss Talk Podcast 101 would love to present you with this award. It says to Dr. Emmanuel Fasania, PT. DPT CSOMT yeah. in recognition of your determination set forth to accomplish goals of becoming a doctor in PT, then achieving it at such a young age. Wow. In 2020. Thank you so much. Man. This means a lot to me. That means a lot to me. Check it out. Yeah. We had not really wanted to hear, bro. Oh, yeah. I appreciate yeah, that. Man. For sure. Man.